Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric at precision-elec.com. We're your industrial automation service center, so if you have any questions or concerns regarding any of your electrical equipment, it's what we do. We're a small business and we've been doing this for a very long time, so feel free to call and ask questions. And we sell these drives as well as a bunch of other industrial equipment. So in this video, we're going to actually cover advanced protection of your variable frequency drive. A lot of people, they just run the drive right out of the box, not going through the steps to properly protect both the drive and the motor. And that's a big mistake because the nature of electricity is they're not designed out of the box to, pr to protect. Uh, basically, they're not designed to protect from external factors that can only be done by the person doing the installation, which is you. What they do is they pre-program them to protect the absolute limit to what they're capable of. And you'll understand a little bit more of that here in a moment. So let's start with the drive. In order to protect the drive, any drive, we want to make sure we wire fuses to it. Now, in my instance, I've got a, a single phase drive, so I've only got one hot wire coming in. And in general, when you're fusing a drive, you need to make sure you fuse every single hot wire. So if you have single phase 230 volt and it's got two hot wires, you have to fuse them both. If you have 120 volt like I do, I have a hot and a neutral, I only have to fuse the hot, so I only need one fuse. If I've got three phase 230 volt or three phase 460 or three phase 600 volt, then I have to fuse all three because all three of them are hot. So essentially, anytime there's a hot wire, you have to fuse it. It's absolute minimum requirement. You'd be amazed at how many people call and their drive blew up and we find out they didn't even have a fuse or a breaker on the line side. Now the good news is, is this drive actually has in the manual proper sizing procedures for those wires, the wires you're running through the fuse and the fuse size itself. That's actually in section 3.2.2. I know the manual's our favorite thing. We go into it every time somebody calls, but always open that up and there's this nice chart here, okay? And on the left-hand side of the chart, there's a label on your drive, it's got a part number. You're gonna look up your part number and you're gonna follow the chart across and it's gonna recommend a fuse size, and it's also going to recommend a breaker size, which we don't recommend using breakers unless it's all you got, and a recommended wire size for your wiring. So what gauge of wire to use in thickness to make sure that you don't overheat the wire and maybe burn them up or cause a short. In my case, I needed a 15 amp fuse, and I only needed one fuse because I have one hot wire. If you want to reference your particular diagram, for how to wire your input voltage. There is actually another section for that in the manual called mains connections to 240 volt single phase supply, mains connection to three phase supply, and motor connections. It'll actually walk you through it. That's section 3.2.1.2. And there's also actually a mains connection for 120 volt single phase. That's actually the drive print I'm using for this particular sample. So you just want to use whichever diagram matches your corresponding drive. So let me get back to that chart. It says I need a 15 amp fuse. And so I installed this fuse block here and I installed this fuse. Now this is what's called a current limiting fuse or a fast blow fuse, which is what, what we prefer. They're a little more expensive, but we like to call them cheap insurance. Essentially what that means is, is if it exceeds that amount of current that you've sized it for, for even a small amount of time that they blow really quick. And the reason you want that is because if the current is exceeding what the drive is rated for and it doesn't trip fast enough or blow fast enough, your drive's gonna blow up and then your thing's gonna trip. It's like you don't want it to go in that order. You want the fuse to blow before the drive blows up because you don't want the drive to blow up, right? So in my case, I installed the 15 amp fuse. I have my hot wire coming into the fuse block on the other side, I have it wired directly to the drive. So make sure that the other side of the block is wired directly to the input of your drive. And that will pr properly protect the input power on your drive. That's really all there is to it. Just make sure you fuse it. You size the fuses properly, you buy the right fuses, current limiting fuses, and you wire all the hot wires to those fuses. That's really it. Your drive's protected now. I'm not saying that in 100% of instances, you'll always be protected, but you've maximized your potential for protection. If it blows up after that, then you just got really bad luck. I mean, it can happen. You can get a power surge that blows the drive up before the fuse blows, but it'd have to happen really quick at that point. 
So the second part is actually protecting your motor. Now, a real common issue that we run into when people calling with these drives is they wire something between the output of the drive and the motor itself. There can't be anything wired between the output of the drive, terminals U, V, and W, and the motor itself. You can't wire it through a starter. You can't wire it through a contact block. You can wire it through like some terminal blocks. That's fine because you're maintaining a constant connection, but nothing that can open. In other words, nothing that can disconnect the output power from the drive to the motor. That is a guaranteed way to blow up your drive. Probably not your motor, but it's a guaranteed way to blow up your drive. Because if, if for any reason that opens up, the power that's flowing through the drive to the motor has to go somewhere. And it gets pushed back up into the drive. And that's how people commonly blow up the output section of their drive when they call. So no, you have to have a, a, a single connection from the output of the drive to the motor. The third thing you need to make sure you do is to set the overload of the motor. Out of the box, your drive is rated for a certain amount of amps, motor amps. And when it ships, it's at 100% of that rated current. In other words, if this drive's rated for five amps, it's not gonna trip on an overload unless it exceeds that five amps. Well, if your motor's only rated for three amps and your drive's pumping out five amps, what's gonna happen? You're gonna burn up your motor, right? So you actually need to scale the current of your drive to the current rating of your motor. This is extremely important because you want your drive to trip if for any reason you're overloading this motor, you want the drive to trip out and protect it. You wanna make sure. And let's go ahead and program that. There's a little bit of math involved, but it's, uh, it's really easy to do. So let me go ahead and show you how to program it. Now, as I said before, there's gonna be a little bit of math on this one. First, we're gonna to go to parameter 108. Parameter 108 is your overload. As you can see, out of the box, it's set to 100%, which means the drive will output 100% of its rated current to the motor before it decides to start tripping. Well, my particular drive is rated for 2.4 amps. So I'm gonna write down 2.4, and then I'm gonna go over to my motor, and on my motor, there's a nameplate, and on that nameplate, it says what the full load amps are. In my case, it's 1.7. So I'm gonna write down 1.7. Then we can plug those numbers into our formula on parameter 108, and it is right in the manual, and that's our motor current, which is 1.7 in my case, divided by my drive current, which is 2.4. In that case, it comes out to be 0.67. Then we multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage, which means 67%. So essentially, my drive only needs to output 67% of its current to reach the maximum current of my motor. So I need to tell the drive that. If I press enter again and I go to parameter 108, I'm gonna lower that 100% to 67%. Get down there and press enter again. And now I've officially set my overload in the drive for 1.7 amps. So if any time my motor exceeds that 1.7 amps, it's gonna flash CL on the screen, which means you've reached your current limit. After about 15 seconds of running in CL, it's gonna trip in order to protect the motor. And that'll set the overload for the drive. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The uh, SM Vector drive at this point is wired and protected with the fusing on the input. We've made sure that there's nothing between the output and the motor itself. It's a direct connection. And we've also set the overload in the drive. That covers pretty much all of your bases in proper motor and drive protection. There are other considerations you can take in to effect, uh, but that involves other equipment on your line. You could say, for example, we sell line reactors, and a line reactor would protect, from, uh, protect your other equipment on the line from the harmonics coming off your drive. We can help you size those if you call. Um, another one you could actually get is a load reactor, and that's when you're running really long cable runs on your, uh, your output wiring. So if you have any other questions, just give us a call. Again, our website's precision-elec or precision-elec.com. Uh, we do this every day, all day, every day, have, have been for over 30 years now, and we are your automation service center. Drives, motors, controls, we pretty much do it all. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the video, and we'll see you in the next one.